how God lines up everything. If you'll you pull up, we're not going to do a video. We don't have time for that, but we'll start. We'll just pull up the scriptures. I, I do want to talk about a few things very, very, very quickly. Um, you know, God is in control. Amen. Yes. He knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. And he's never, ever, ever surprised. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is what Jesus replied. After he left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. But are you so dull? Don't you love Jesus? Are you an idiot? <laughs> Jesus just straight with them. Eventually we're going to do a series on Jesus. He's not what you think he is. It's going to be cool. We're going to actually look because there's so many like religious paintings and stuff. You know? mm -hmm. He's always staring off in the door. It's very weird. Very weird. A lot of pictures on there. Are you so dull, he asked, don't you see that nothing that any person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomachs, and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, enmity, strife, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside, defile a person. The inside is important. The inside is important. It, it, it makes me think of baking. It's the ingredients that make a good dish, am I right? Chefs buy the most spectacular ingredients to make the best dishes. We heard of something called a truffle that are thousands of dollars yep. for this type of mushroom mm -hmm. that chefs will go buy and put just a sliver mm -hmm. in their food mm -hmm. to make it taste a certain way. Ingredients are important. What's in the inside counts. We once, <laughs> we once had some brownies made for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gee, thanks. You're welcome. I'm going to say tomato. <laughs> The ingredients are important. They decide to use spinach. The brownies look great on the outside. Thank you. I said it exactly. If y'all can, can see him, her, oh yeah. That was the look on our face when we bit into it. It looked great on the outside, but when you took a bite, oh my goodness. It was. I better watch out because this is online. <laughs> it was a nice attempt. <laughs> the ingredients are important. What's on the inside counts. Let's just put it that way. Wow. It was something like wow. When you're nine months pregnant, they're delicious, though. <laughs> 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 and so is a lot of mayonnaise on a Subway sandwich, but then we don't want it all the time. <laughs> it was oh, <laughs> What's on the inside is important. The book of Proverbs says it this way. Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Amen. But how do you know what's in your heart? How do you really know what's there? Wow. Luke 6.45. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Matthew goes on and says it like this. Matthew 12. Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers. There's another time. Ooh. Jesus is very loving. You, you snakes. How can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. Look at another scripture, James 3. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Words you speak out of your mouth reveal the condition of your heart. Now we've talked about how God comes.
comes in and can make a new heart. But there's still issues that are being dealt with. There's no such thing as saying, I don't mean that, after you said it. Because Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. And James tells us that if you're going, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, and then the next day, lay into somebody, which is one of those is true. Kind of scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Your words reveal your heart. And oftentimes, the real you comes out in the heart of the situations. I have a little illustration here. Caleb, will you come help me since I've got the mic this time? Oh, you hold it? Thank you. <laughs> I've got a sponge here, and it's full of something. Now, it's so full, it's actually coming out already. But whenever you squeeze it, whatever's on the inside really comes out. Oftentimes in our lives, when we're going through the hard times, through the difficult times, through the times that really, really... We just wish we could run away from them. When things don't go the way we want them, when we're getting overwhelmed, what comes out of our mouths during those times is revealing what's really in our heart. Now, if you're like me, sometimes that squeezing, and what comes out, you're like, ooh, I didn't even realize that was still in there. You ever been there? Yeah. I have. But just this past week, in our little tiff, which we've made up, but, <laughs> but I was squeezed. Like, oh no, there's something else in there that needs to come out. There's something else that God needs to deal with. So, oh, <laughs> that would not have been smart. So Talk about a shock. My heart jumped. <laughs> follow God with all our heart. Those issues come up. And we see that there's things within us that the hard times have pulled out. And we're like, oh, snap. What do we do? Do we beat ourselves up? I have a tendency of doing that. Oh, God. Not only am I a Christian, but I'm a pastor. That shouldn't be there anymore. What do we do? Luckily, James goes on and tells us. James 4, 5 through 10. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more, look at the word, what's the word? Grace. 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 Yes. That is why scripture said, God opposes the proud. That scripture scares me sometimes. Mm -hmm. He opposes the proud. But shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then. To God. Now he's talking to Christians here. People who've already said, God, we want to follow you. We believe Jesus died on the cross. We believe Jesus was risen from the dead. We want to give everything we can to follow you with all of our hearts. And he looks here and says, submit then to God. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. I love that. He doesn't stand back and go, you idiot, we've gone over this 14,000 times and you're still mad. No. When you come to God, when you come to God, he comes here to you. He's waiting on you to make that first step. Even whenever you've been in the squeeze and something's come out that you're like, oh man. Wash your hands, you sinners. 
and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord. And he will lift you up. That's a promise. That's a promise. That even whenever we screw up, even after we're Christians, he's willing to go, all right, let's work on this. Let's set this straight. Let's move on. But it comes, like what John tells us, we have to confess our sins to him. And he is faithful and just to wash them all away. As Libby said, she thought for sure I brought that because she's like, oh, you're going to teach that Jesus washes our sins white as snow. Well, Libby, <laughs> you're right. Jesus washes us white as snow. And we're able to enter in to his presence where there is joy forevermore. In fact, I said it's fullness of joy. So it's not even just a little bit. It's like all there in the bag of chips. beat ourselves up when we mess up. That we have to be able to be adults and say, you know what, I do still struggle in this area, God. Thank, thank you for actually letting me see that this is an area in my heart that I still need to give you. And don't be proud about it. God opposes the proud. But come to Him and say, I still need your help. I still need your help. Jesus, I still need your blood to wash me clean. Holy Spirit, I still need you to fill me, to overflow me. I still need you, Holy Spirit, to come and speak to my heart and guide me and direct me and lead me and show me how to live this life, not only just to survive this life, but teach me how to thrive in this life. Because I know, I know even in my life that there has to be more than what I'm walking through now. Because too often of the times, those squeezing situations shouldn't be squeezing me that hard. The more and more solid I come in Him, the, the less and less that squeeze is going to do to me. And I'll be so full of Jesus, whenever life starts to squeeze me, people are going to start seeing Jesus. I mean, Jesus had a crazy life. Jesus had a stressful life. If you really go read it, think about this. The leaders of the day... This, the leaders of the day followed him everywhere and trapped him. Now think, your bosses at your job, their job was to trap you. Could you imagine that? That would be stressful. And he's traveling all the time. I was tired from just going to California. Now. And this guy's walking everywhere. Every day. Every day. It talks about like the one instance where they were going to throw him off a cliff. It says Jesus walked right through him. He was bad. He was a tough dude. You want to kill me? I'm just going to help this man over Other people are trying to set him up as a king. And what do you do? You the mountains to go pray. Knowing that they were going to set him up as a king, he walks away. It would be awesome to be able to be in every situation that we have in our life and act just like Jesus. To learn how not to worry about what other people think because you know God loves you so much more. To not have to worry about if your friends like you because you know God likes you. Wouldn't it be awesome to be the trendsetter? To be the person that everybody else wants to be, the, be around? It's possible. People like Jesus. Regular people. <laughs> other people want to We can get to that point. But it starts with us continuing to submit and humble ourselves before God. Pray with our hands. Father, I know in my life, and I know in the lives of these people here, and, and the ones that weren't able to make it today, I know there are areas in our hearts that we still need to give you. Oh, we, we, we may have thought we'd given you everything, God, but you have a wonderful way of applying pressure on the right things 
that shows us what's on the inside of us. And you're asking us, what's in your container? God, I'm asking you that you would help us to empty ourselves more. Empty us of our pride. Empty us of our arrogance. Empty us of anything. Our lusts, our ambitions, our, our insecurities. Anything, God, that is not of you. And Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to, to reveal to each and every single one of us what it is that you want to work on next and within our lives. And God, when we see that, Father, I'm asking you to help us not to grow weary or to go, oh, Lord, we're screwed up again. We're never going to be able to make it through. We're never going to be able to love what you want us to be. But, Father, help us to see that it's really your love and your tenderness that's calling us and showing us other things to get away so that we can know you more and walk with you more and allow your spirit to flow through us more. God, we want to be so full of you and your Holy Spirit that there's nothing else. God, we want to be sold out for what you called us to do. Lord, I pray against anything that's going to keep us from your presence. And Father, I ask that even the things that we see as weaknesses, that you're able to turn them around to use us to draw close together. So God, if there's someone who's dealing with doubts, God, let them use that doubt to find the answers. Because ultimately, it all comes back to you. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for keeping things from your hands. God, though, right now we're just saying we let go. We let go of the things we think that's going to satisfy us. And we say, come into our lives. Have your way. Let us know how much you love us, even when we have issues. Because ultimately, Jesus, you're the one who heals us mm -hmm. of our issues. Just like the woman of blood, we can tell the others around us that we know the healer. Father, we love you. We love you. God, I just ask that also. Those that are discouraged today, feel a little out of it, that you would bring encouragement. That you would let them feel your presence. And that they would see you. God, I pray that you would take the blinders off. The schemes of the enemy that's been used to try to keep them from seeing your hand moving in their life, God. I, I just ask you right now that you would open up their eyes. That they would see you moving. That they would see that your hands really have been on their lives from the very beginning. And that God, that even with the situations that may not be the way that they want them right now, that Father, that you are ultimately in control. And so Father, I ask that you would help them to surrender that area and that they would see that you've got the best in mind and that you can use even this to promote them Get them where they're, not where they need to be, because they're where they need to be right now, but to develop them into the, the person that you're calling them to be. Because God, they're, they're not where they're at by accident, and they're, they're not where they're at forever. But that you are actually creating them a base that you're going to be able to build upon something great. And that if they didn't have that base, Father, if they didn't have that base built, then the weight of what you want to do in their lives would not be able to contain it. And then eventually it would crash and crumble. So God, I just pray that you would help them to be encouraged and to be able to persevere through that situation so that base could be created 